gentlemen, welcome to episode 13 of whatever the fuck this is. Listen, people that know me, people that know Vlad, know that 13 is a very important number for me. Because opposite to common belief, you know, 13 for me is a very lucky number because it is my birthday. Everyone fucking hates 13, 13 is an unlucky number. There's hotels that don't have the number 13, like the f- they don't have a 13th floor. Um, there's airplanes that don't have a 13th row. And I've always adopted 13 as a, um, sign of luck for me and a standing out because, you know, Friday the 13th, dude, it's my jam, you know? I don't know. I've always seen it as a way of, it's a, it's a sign, you know? I was like, okay, you're not meant to do the normal stuff, you know? Maybe I'm overthinking it too much, but I, I believe in this, like, coincidences in numerology. So... After this dramatic ass introduction to episode 13, (laughs) welcome Marg, you're back after like, I don't know how many episodes. Hello, it's good to be back. It is, look at us, I don't know, if you're not watching this on YouTube, you're missing out, if you're watching, like if you're hearing this somewhere else, go on YouTube, search Vlad Herescu and then you're gonna find this video, it's episode 13. And just peep at the nice Christmas tree we have in the background. You know, we have a very small apartment. It takes up about, like, 25% of the apartment. But <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been uh, given a lot of love and a lot of appreciation. We even have some some mint candy canes uh, draping on it. So, yeah. How how are you, Mark? How's, um, how's life? It's good. Um, my illustration projects have been doing pretty good. I've been doing um, holiday portraits for people and thus directing them to my red bubble so that's been doing pretty good yeah not really enough to like sustain me still um other than that it's been pretty good i've got a few other bigger projects coming up mm-hmm. some paid some unpaid but it just seems that like everything that comes along is either super and en- en- like uh energetic about meeting me and wanting to work with me and then it's unpaid work Or it's paid work, and they're super excited to work with me, and then the job disappears. So it's still just the same story that it has been for the past couple of months. Um, But so it seems like you're getting victories, but not all the ways. Looks like you're like you're winning battles, but not the war. Yeah, sort of thing. I guess, in a way. Are you? Do you think you're getting anything out of it? Or I know I know it has to be frustrating to like keep getting your hopes raised up and then have them shattered but do you think you're getting anything out of this other than stress and anxiety i don't really see much aside from like i guess interview experience but at this point it's nothing more than a facetime call so there's nothing really to stress about when it comes to interviews are you getting more are you getting more accustomed to speaking to people over the yeah phone which is gonna be pretty big and from now on the only thing that i'm a little like unsure about is like i don't know how to dress like i don't know if i'm supposed to dress professionally like i would if i were about to show up to an interview or if i should just dress how i would if i were at home you know yeah um obviously not like sloppy but to an extent like can i just wear a t-shirt on in a phone interview you know yeah. um but other than that uh, i've got like a couple logo projects a couple other things and a few like prospects you could say but nothing really that hopeful and it's just making me lose all hope in getting like an actual agency job Mm -hmm. and i don't know i kind of want to figure out hope i i'm hoping that i can figure out a way to do this all well what's myself okay let's so i i hear that it is still a struggle for you to do that and we'll go into my side of the stuff in a while but for now i want to focus on you it seems like you're having a, a difficult time and understandably so you know no no previous experience no internship mm-hmm. you're in a pretty tough fucking situation you know and i know that there's a lot of people out there who are also in a similar situation and it's it's easy like it might seem that you're taking the easy way out you're like oh fuck it i'm just not gonna do an agency job well i think that if you would have really wanted to work for an agency you would have found some way of, like, finding a compromise. Like, I know there's a bunch of opportunities that have come along where you could have compromised for something that was 40% of what you wanted and 60% of what you didn't want, Mm -hmm. which is honestly agency life is the same. 
<laughs> it's like honestly the same, but like they sell it to you. It's not the same. 40% of the stuff you do is like creative. 60% of the stuff you do is administrative or uh, presenting or like emails, you know? Yeah. So I think that you you could have gotten a job until now. It's not that you could have not. Like I, I and I know I'm going to get you in trouble, quote unquote, for this. But I don't think so. I think that you know what you want and I don't think that you should settle for less. And that's a very bold decision that you can make because, uh, you know, luckily you have the financial opportunities to do so, which, you know, we have have to be honest, I can do the same thing because of the same reasons. But because of that, you're, you're still taking a bold decision of like, hey, I can give it another like few months and still trying to make it on my own. So I want to focus on that. What have you been doing until now? Because I know the last time that we talked, you started out your, with your Redbubble uh, sticker shop. And if those, for those of you who don't know it, um, she has a really cool sticker shop. You have how many designs? Like 50 designs? 55, I think. 55 different stickers that you can get. Like really cool stickers. Um, especially now for Christmas, they're like, a bunch of them are pretty cool. Yeah. If you have like a few favorite shows, like she has uh, Umbrella Academy and all sorts of stuff. But... How has that been going? And I know you've been making money a few other ways, you know, slowly, slowly making some money. But Mm -hmm. tell me about that. And, you know, the amount of money that you've made can definitely be done as a side hustle for someone who has a job. So I feel like, you know, you uh, this is how you can make from what, 300 to 400 bucks a month. Yeah. More. About around that, at least. Um I don't know. I'm going to try and stick it out for a few more months, see if I can't find anything that's within my field, yeah. that's within my job parameter, because at this point I actually have, like, standards. I've met a bunch of people. I've met a bunch of recruiters. I'm, like, I understand <clears throat> which jobs are, like, real, which jobs are fake, which ones are, like, kind of phony out there yeah. and all that. And at this point, like, I know what I want, and if anything, like, a little bit less comes along, like, I'll consider it, but if it's overall not going to benefit me in the long run in my advertising career, I'm not going to want to do it. Right. So that's, like, why I've ended up not following up in the previous one out in Elk Grove. Yeah. Because also the fact that I have to reach out every time we have a, an interaction and he won't respond. Right. That's already a red flag for me that I don't want to work with this person who's not good at communication. Right. Like It was not the fact that it was like, oh, I wanted <clears throat> so much more money and they were not offering enough or, oh, I wanted to work to do logos and they were not only going to get me to do, you know, brochures. No, it's like communication sucked with these people yeah. and you saw that there were going to be problems once you started working for them. Yeah, I mean, from the first moment I had to chase chase the person down for all yeah. the information that I needed and like um it, it like I had after I think it was a month that I waited after the interview yeah because I was like giving him the benefit of the doubt because of the holidays and whatever and I was like oh he'll get back to me whatever I waited a whole month and then I emailed back and he's like oh yeah sorry I forgot to email I'm like you don't it sounds like we're so entitled too, but I feel like that's the problem, you know? Like desiring good fucking service is something that, for example, you have to be entitled to. Like you have to have the luxury to. Because it's true, some people don't have the money to choose. And some people will have to settle for people that are fucking... They, they suck at communication like this yeah. dude. And they cannot maintain communication. They will, they will have to do a job that they will suck just because they need money to provide for their families Mm -hmm. and because of that these people can like keep being assholes you know but if we all kept each other to higher standards then i believe that we could all enjoy of a more productive and enjoyable life in general you know not only in the work but everywhere you know and it's again like you know whatever uh utopia like thoughts but if an employer could be like okay let's good maintain good communication the highest of the candidates would try to apply, you know? Mm-hmm. So every, it's a win-win. I, I don't understand why people don't I mean, it's maintain basic. communication with a candidate that they're clearly interested in. Exactly. Like, they like if made you go all the way to their office and everything. Exactly. You know, I, I don't That's get what it. I don't get is, like, you, you, if I'm a, a major prospect and you want to actually hire me, why don't you show any actual, like, effort towards getting me into the office or towards getting me into the job? 
Yeah, exactly. If you need somebody in this position, and I told you that I would, and then you never get back to me, what am I supposed to think? Yeah. Is the job gone? Did you find somebody else? Yeah. Are you just waiting for me to say something again? Like, what? at what point do you think that, like, me telling you that I'll do the job is, like, a good end of conversation point? Yeah, exactly. It's like... It, and it... from that point that I last told him to do the freelance job, too, I haven't heard a thing, and that's been, like, a month as well. So he just ghosted you? Have you, like... I have not reached out yet because... You, you said, like, Happy Thanksgiving and stuff, right? I texted Happy Thanksgiving because I had... Dude, if you're listening to this, just text her, like... Just, just message me, let me know what's going on. Yeah. It's crazy, like, uh, people that... I don't really that... care if somebody else got it. That's yeah, like, remember the last time we were here, we were talking about uh, recruiters, like, not even replying to your application. Mm -hmm. This is, like, deep within the process already. Like, we're talking, you already gave them, like... You're already, like, throwing ideas, you know? You're already, like... Hey, dude, like, I already know what we want to do, and they just completely ghost you. Yep. Do you think it was, do you really think it was because you told them that you couldn't, like, be involved longer term? Maybe, but it would have been nice to be told if that's what it was. Yeah. I'm sorry, but, I mean, communication is one of the basic, like, requirements on any job. Yeah posting ever just say hey no i don't agree and and if he says no we can't do that i'll say okay nice talking to you yeah and we're good but now i'm sitting here a month later like hmm, i wonder what happened with that because i yeah. never heard back after i told him that i couldn't do a long-term agreement but i could do like whatever he needed for a short time so i just don't get it so uh, across all of your search what kind of habits is there any habits or any routines or any skills that you have acquired um, or anything that you've lost, good or bad? You know, what what has changed about you from the point that you had to understand, you know, you, now you graduated and now you got to get a job, mm -hmm. which was in uh, June until now when we we're in December. You know, in this six months, what has changed about you that has given you the opportunity to slowly start growing that side hustle, which we hope is going to turn into a full time? Um, I mean, uh, habits and like skills, I suppose. Um, I've definitely gotten quicker at uh, my digital illustrations. Yeah. Because beginning of quarantine, it took me a few days to do that one. Of yeah, myself, I remember that. Yeah. Which, given I was lazy and not very persistent on it, but like... The iPad still, was a bold investment. That was a good investment. I'm still... still and you're still paying it. You have to calculate that. how much you... How much each product that you've made I'm on it sold. Um, you're almost paying it off with the products that you've made. Like halfway through, you know? Maybe. But, you know, you gotta pay off bills at the moment, so... Um, you know, counting in value. Yeah. Uh, but habit wise, um, I've definitely like picked up trying to focus more on like what makes me happy during the day. Yeah, I definitely saw that. Like I, I, I'll make sure that I make time to work and do the things that like need to be done and like yeah. do the job search and do all the freelance projects and do every little thing that I need to do throughout the day. But I'll throw in there like an episode of something I want to watch or I'll throw in there like, uh, 10 minute like stretch yoga session or something like that just because I, i've noticed that like if i do it it makes me like feel a little better and yeah. it motivates me more and so i've tried to acquire that habit um and i've actually done a pretty good job i'd say yeah since since june yeah now that you've been in a in an apartment where it's you're still not enjoying full privacy because you're living with me, mm -hmm. but you're obviously enjoying more privacy than you've ever had. Yep. So, do you feel like you can finally start learning about what you really like, like doing throughout the day and accepting it as well? Not so much finding it, but accepting a lot of the stuff. Like, hey, dude, <coughs> I like staying on the couch and like just being comfy and doing my work. Yeah. And just like chilling, looking out the window, going for a walk. Like, you, like, I think you've come to terms with that the stuff that you like are very simple. Yeah. And that what keeps you happy, like, is within your reach. Or am I just assuming too many things? No. No. You're you're pretty spot on in that. Um, I'm 
I mean, in this apartment, I definitely wish there was more space. Yeah, like, definitely. The, I think the one thing that would make this area just just perfect is if one we had a, no a balcony. Oh my god! I don't. But even, it, even if it's cold, like, I don't care. No, like just we'll a put balcony, a heater on there. Just some outside area. Like I don't yeah. even care if it's snowing outside. It's just I want to be able to go outside without having to leave my apartment and yeah. leave the comfort of my home and that's what i don't like right now we can cut this area off just a little bit and then just <laughs> open up all the stuff like make it like a a sealed we thing open up all the windows but, and make this like a small balcony and that's it but i like that i can kind of wake up whenever i want yeah. like the first week from uh the first what, what what did we come back from the first week that we got back from Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, First week of December. That's how... It, gosh, we are so far into December already. Like, yeah, dude. This month goes by. Bro, so Christmas crazy. just like... Santa's coming to town. How, what can I say? You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is just about... He's changing the oil on his sleigh right now. Sledge. Um, But I love that I don't have to like... Get up, basically. And mm -hmm. like the first week that we got back from... Um, Pennsylvania, like I was up at like seven thirty every day, like happy about it. And now, yeah. a week later or two weeks later, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm waking up at like nine, and I'm still happy about it, and I can still get things done. Without... Yeah, funny enough, during Thanksgiving, you were waking up at like seven seven thirty every day. Yeah, well, and then you came here, you woke up for a few days, and then I think that the fact that we had a comfy bed again. <laughs> you had a comfy bed again and the fact that I was like getting up early and I was every time getting up earlier and earlier. You stopped waking up with me. And so there was no more like accountability and you also started like realizing that you didn't want to wake up that early every single day. You're like, fuck, that's a big commitment. Well, I On, like, like honestly, you know, like, like it's not something bad, you know. Waking up at 7.30, but now that you get up at like 6, 6.30, yeah. it's not enough time for me to fall asleep again and like enjoy it. It's and, just there's not enough hours for me to do shit in this day so, that I want to do, you know. I'm and, sorry. Well, no, it's fine. It's just like at that point, I'd rather sleep in two more hours and like feel yeah. more rested. I make sure that I wake up at nine. I could wake you up earlier. I know. But... I could wake up myself. <laughs> but uh, I mostly do. Like I usually wake up at like 830 myself and then I'll just like absorb the morning. Yeah. On my own. Um, but I definitely like my own terms of cooking as well and as far as like habits and skills as well i've definitely excelled in cooking since quarantine started like i've made it kind of like a, a ritual now where like i've got my speaker and i play some music and i've got like a glass of wine or a Dude, you've been cooking glass of lemonade or amazing. whatever amazing and i get everything out i get like my, my mindset and i'm like okay this takes this long to cook this long to cut out this long to whatever no let blah, me blah, tell blah. you your cooking is has this is the <laughs> skill that you got in this year like the number one skill wow mark like first of all it's not that you were <laughs> bad at cooking you just not never cooked before you used to like I don't know, take frozen stuff. I just didn't really like it. I yeah, you just didn't know. like it. Well, it, it was also the matter of, like, I never wanted to cook for just me. Yeah, exactly. And, like, I couldn't, I wasn't going to cook for four people. That's so sweet. You know, I came in the night and I like, cook. Yay. Well, it's just like, I don't like, I can't cook a single serving and I don't like eating leftovers. No, yeah, so you're my right. whole life would just be a surrounding of, like, wasted food, basically. So I never liked cooking in at the Blake basically just because, like, right? Yeah, I, I didn't want to cook for one person. Plus, also people watch you and all that. Like, yeah, and then like I don't know when Blake, when you go cook. Most of the times, I like seventy five percent of the the time that you're in the kitchen, I let you be alone. Yeah. So you can just do your stuff. You know, you can sing, drink your wine. You know, do your cooking. Yeah. I love it. The, the well, food comes out great. You've learned how to cook like a real like cook. Thank you. Yeah. But, at the Blake, I would get, like, wrapped up in conversations or wrapped up in the dog or something. I would fuck shit up. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, I got oh this my bad God, reputation. With olive. Yeah. I got a bad reputation of cooking at the Blake just because I would screw shit up so many, so many times. Just yeah. I'd, like, get distracted and, like, talk to somebody. <laughs> yeah. or, like, I would, like, take Olive out. Or not, Olive would have to go out. And yeah. I'd be like, ah. And I'd, like, pause this pasta and come back and turn it back on or something. And I'd do something that I didn't think was, like, wrong. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I was like, why did you do that? 
Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and it's mostly just because I didn't have the time to, like, sit and, like, process my thoughts and, like, prepare everything together. So was it a skill that you deliberately chose to adopt or was it something that kind of slowly crept in and then you adopted because it was kind of a necessity? Uh, it definitely crept in and I had to adapt really quick. Yeah. But I learned to like it just because I was like, well, if I'm going to have to do this for the rest of my life because I am. But at the beginning, I, just for the record, I was I was there with you. Like I was trying to oh, cook all the time. Like it was not like I was like, hey, Mark, I don't want to cook. Like you're no, going to have to cook. There was no that wasn't the that, necessity, like, was you know. There was a decision that he yeah. wasn't going to cook and I was. You kind of kicked like, me out of the kitchen it was <laughs> slowly. Just like, uh, I... <laughs> slowly grew to like it and i liked it more and more and i was like you know what i'm not complaining i don't like the way you do things i want to do it my way so uh, you don't cook no more because this young <laughs> entrepreneur in the kitchen i don't like the way you do things yeah well, no i loved it i loved it and yeah. honestly like I, what was i gonna do i was not gonna complain it was like food every night you know it's yeah, like delicious food basically i was like i'm gonna have to do this for the rest of my life you know like every day yeah. i'm gonna have to oh learn God. i'm gonna have to cook myself breakfast lunch and dinner yeah. Every day for the rest of my life. Right. For either you and me or you and me and whoever else is in the household. So I'm going to have to learn to love it. So I just kind of found a, a way to love it. I can't really explain like what I did. I just kind of found like a little groove and a little process that I go through that that like kind of plus make, makes it fun. Plus you found a great way to do like. You know that for two hours of your day, I kind of like, you know what you're going to do with them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you're going to be fucking cooking, yeah, you know? Yeah, there's like no doubt about it. I so mean, it's like, great, like the day's 2022, I can like maybe, find out, I can figure this shit out, you know? there's like one day we'll order out, but there's yeah. always like the guarantee on a weekday where yeah. I'm like, there's two hours where I will be in the kitchen by myself with yeah. music yeah. and lots of nice food and fresh ingredients and like, it just makes me like... So I guess the necessity excited. was like some sort of need of privacy i love the way that this kitchen is is made it's like a little nook dude if it's you perfect. speak it's perfect for this little thing. if i speak and i speak this fucking loud I can't and you're in the him. kitchen and there's nothing playing and you're trying to listen you will not fucking understand mm -hmm. you will hear the noise but you'll not hear what she said no. and this apartment is like super small it's like a little nook it's weird the kitchen, the, yeah and it's perfect like weird I, acoustics it's got weird corners and it's oddly shaped and it's tiny and it's got weird appliances and dumb all the dumb things about it like we it's could have got two a parties in here you know? sink that doesn't even connect into one sink which is just stupid i could put the faucet on the freaking counter and like there's stupid things about the kitchen yeah. but i love it because it's a little like i love it too cozy little place where i can just make us a tasty meal yeah Plus, I'm, I'm I strive to like make it like a restaurant so that I like give myself the illusion that we are ordering out every night. I think this is a <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I order out every night like that. You know, I'm like honestly, it's like she's like, what do you want? And then at the beginning of the week, it's like I'm making an Uber order. You know, You're for the rest of the week, I'm like, your Uber. yeah, Monday I want uh, this. On Tuesday I want chipotle. So instead of chipotle, we're getting Taco Tuesday, and Mark makes it. It's fresh. We don't have to go anywhere, and it's fucking better. So, that's what it is. Well, I, I, I think that overall, your, I think your mom, everyone in your house is kind of impressed as well on this like skill that you've acquired. Yeah, I mean, I never really expected to be like a red bubble artist. Like I've always seen them, and I've always like been on a red bubble shopper. I mean, I mean cooking. Oh, I know as well. Sorry, I got distracted. Yeah, but, no, no, I mean cooking. Um, Cooking him. Like your mom, like I know your mom was like, oh, like, is this Margaret? Because you've been cooking like some oh, dishes yeah, that are parents, like crazy. They always tried to teach me to, how to cook before I left, uh, before I graduated high school. Because they're like, you're going to have to cook one day. You've got to know how to do this stuff. And they would always try to teach me. And I was like, I don't care. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to. Like, I don't. Well, and they, I would like start to pay attention. And then I'm like, well, I'm yeah. And I would just lose interest because I was a bratty teenager. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't care about that And then in college, point, you know? I was like, I can't cook that right now. Like, there's no yeah. point in me learning it. What can I put in the microwave? And now I'm like, Mom, do you have a third cookbook you can make me, please? Because I've cooked everything. <laughs> I was going to say, like, let's let, like, give him some example. Like, <clears throat> what, were, what are we eating this week? What was this beef thing that you you made? The beef um, that look, that's basically like... Oh, it's like a meat sauce. It's like a bolognese. Yeah. But... Um, that one was pretty easy. It's basically just ground beef. Beef Lombardi? 
Yeah, that's what my mom calls it. Yeah, it's called a beef Lombardi, apparently. Um, but it's basically just ground beef with like a uh, a small little jar of like unsalted tomato sauce mm-hmm. and some diced tomatoes, and then I put a crap ton of herbs and spices and yeah, stuff so, in there. So basically, like um, mm-hmm. the fucking the sauce, the typical sauce yeah. for pasta, yeah. And then I just let it simmer for a while, and then boil some pasta on the side and okay yeah i guess that was an easier one but i think like i don't the explosive chicken one that we had from action bronson that was like so that many different things that had to go in it like the, the one that had like so many tastes like the one they had to throw like you had to cook it then you had to put it in the oven then you had to yeah. fry it again like what my point is is like you've developed you've made dishes that require not only many ingredients and weird ingredients but like you have to like make sure that you cook it one way first then you have to throw it in into another way and you have to like constantly make sure that it each stage it cooks just enough you know Mm -hmm. and i think that's the hardest part and Uh, my biggest struggle is all the root vegetables that we did as well meat yeah all the steaks all the steaks and we we still to this day have never cooked a well-done steak in this house (laughs) like we never cook we never will because we're fuck a well-done steak no i'm just saying we're always too (laughs) afraid to oh yeah it's never gonna happen yeah that we always (laughs) always always undercook it because like even the steak that we had the other or last night yeah right it was still pretty medium rare but it was kind of like on the red side just because it was bloody yeah but um i loved it for like, me it was I, the per- I took it out you hit it perfect you hit I it took like it out and then i blood checked it and i had to put it back in mm-hmm. and then when i put it back in and took it out it was i pulled it out at the inside temperature at 135 yeah right and you're supposed to pull it out 145 yeah and so then I put it in the tin foil and closed Did it Did any of that have to be on the iron skillet? All of it was on the iron skillet. So I, I think that the main problem that you have and, and that I used to have too is that you don't heat up that oh, bad no, boy. Oh, I did. I did. Did it smoke yes. up the room? Yep. Okay, yeah, then you did. I had there, a, there's no way of doing it without smoking on the fucking room. You didn't come in there yesterday. I that's why you had the vent. The that's why I had the fan going. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. So you did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's why it came out perfect. Like no, that steak came out seared it on, beautiful. Uh, like five minutes on each side, beautiful. and then in the oven. Cast iron, man. Wow. Yeah. What a what a discovery! Like it was it was a, that's a skill within the skill of no, cooking. I always. Knew thanks about to your it. parents I for that i just knew it was expensive and i knew it was hard to take care of and i didn't want to do it in college yeah and i wanted to wait until i was in this type of situation to get it which is why i did the thing that your parents told us all those things about iron cast iron skillet like i would have like no soap always destroy it, that thing store it in the oven so that when you preheat it it already like greases itself yeah, no. Yeah, all that, all that. I mean, honestly, if I was dropping like a hundred something bucks on a cast iron, a 200, 300, dude, I would read like how to use it, you know? But the fact that it was given, if somebody were to give it to me, I was like, cool pan, you know? Like, yeah. I'm going to put it in the dishwasher, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm going. But if they tell me, like, hey, dude, I, I mean, since the cast iron, I might say that it's special, but if they tell me, like, hey, take care of it, thank God your father told us all of that. So, yeah. yeah. Well,. On on my side, um, I don't I don't even think I've told. I don't have I've, I haven't said. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I haven't been work like I finished working with uh, the ad agency that I was working with in Chicago as a freelancer for. I've worked with them for like six months, and um, I mean, it was great. It ended on like good terms. We just agreed that, you know, there was, that was the end of the work that we had agreed on. It was great. I worked as a freelancer with them for six months, uh, during the pandemic, which was crazy. I had a job during the pandemic and I knew like, you know, on this podcast kind of foreshadowed, but I kind of knew that it was, it was going to end at some point. And right before holidays is usually when like the work kind of drops a bit. There's not much to do or there's a lot to do, but I they just didn't see a future for me. So now I'm just working on my own stuff. Yeah. Um how, do you say I'm working would you say I'm working more or less than before? It's about the same, honestly. About the same. So there's just less um like I guess stress intensive things. Like, yeah. You have meetings but you don't have to like present to clients, so you don't like have high stress things anymore. It's, it's not even that. Like, it's like, I know I have sometimes stress presenting to the, like, Nikita and stuff because still, you know, but 
they're not you, superiors. You don't have the same stress. Near, yeah, no. Nearly close to how it was when you were in the agency. Right. This is not necessarily something good because I know I'm going to get to a point where I'm going to start dealing with projects that I am going to deal with stress. Yeah. But I feel like you're right. What I feel like, do you feel like some of that stress, and I'm asking myself this question, I feel like some of that stress was having to answer to people constantly. Yeah. Like, I even if I'm going to have yeah, to deal with the President I mean. of the United States and I'm going to have to write... Uh, his speech it's gonna be pressure but i know that it's one project and i'm fucking done i'm not gonna have to fucking show up every single day to fucking work and reply to the fucking president of the united states you know that's what i'm saying i don't know i on my side i'm i've been basically working i'm not gonna reveal many things because i don't like revealing stuff anymore but there's like i've been working on museum which everyone knows and talks about on instagram we've been hitting 521 followers we launched our social media on the later half of the year and been growing it organically been up for four months. Actually. Four months. Growing a bit more, I think. And growing it like organically. Yeah, no. No promotion. money has been involved like in- invested into any ads or anything until now. Uh just pure content, reels, we're hitting like good stuff and basically if you don't know Museamp is this uh service where we help musicians and uh, artists we give them help with marketing. We're basically mentoring them in their marketing and their branding, as well as in their music, their whole music process. If you have an album coming or if you have a song that you want to release, uh, you definitely should talk to us and you know we'll set you up with a nice campaign so you can boom. Or if you're just a musician that's like, hey, I feel like I don't have my uh, my social media game or my branding down. Um, we're just there to help, you know, so... We can help, like, send us a DM and we can, like, point you in the correct direction for free, you know? So, you, if you're wondering, do you think you can help me with this? We'll definitely tell you, like, yeah, we can and this is how we're going to be able to help you. Um, so, I've been working on that side and helping with marketing. I've been working on um, a few, a bunch of other interesting projects with a bunch of other friends which are coming out in 2021. I'm not saying more than that, but I'm just super excited and I've been working on freelancing on Fiverr. Guys, like, I've been getting really good reviews, and there's it's for a good reason. Like, if you go up on my Fiverr and you're in need of a copywriter to write your um, web pages, your email sequences, if you have email marketing and you need taken care of, you can check that out as well. So, I've been working on freelancing, I've been working on getting money from a bunch of different sources, and also trying to project some of these projects into the future so maybe giving up on the money now and working hard you know waking up every morning and doing that but knowing that in the future it's gonna bring me not only money but you know a relationship and a connection a friendship it's it's so important to me you know the money is not only it i've been doing this podcast i've been continuing like i I think i missed one week which i'm pissed off because i had a nice streak i I missed one week of posting an original episode but I think that was Thanksgiving week, right? Yeah, that so was, was that was Thanksgiving, yeah. A matter of the holiday. Yeah. And I, it was fine, but I, I was still done the podcast. And um, I don't know. I wake up every day at 6.30, which is earlier than I used to wake up when I had a job. And I wake up usually because I, I wake up before the alarm. And I am I go to sleep and and I'm like, wow, I can't wait to wake up. I, I For the first time in my life, I actually feel that. You know, I used to believe that it was like just a BS that people told themselves, like lie to themselves. Like I heard that piece of advice, like, you know, you're going to wake up and um, if you do what you love, it's not going to be work and you're not going to have to, it's not going to be hard to wake up in the morning. And I didn't know what that felt like mm-hmm. because I just didn't. Never, not even with tennis. So when I wake up now and I'm like, wow, I get to help my friend build a, customer journey map i can help another friend with writing i get to write get to hire these freelancers to do some of my writing work i can it's like a it's like a game you know it becomes something that's more fun and it's not a job and it's on my terms and i get to do the podcast and yeah it's a fucking struggle to make money but i'm slowly making enough money to keep myself alive and pay rent and it's fucking crazy i'm I'm doing it you know Mm -hmm. and fiverr has been a good source of like that you know just writing for people emails has been a good a good deal you know like it's been like i'm gonna help a a, a person that cannot hire a, an agency with some copy and yeah. instead they're gonna pay me something that an agency will never pay me so mm-hmm. it's perfect it's a win-win and on the rest of my life i've been getting in shape again started working out again as you've seen yeah i've stopped 
working out not because I not like oh I just stopped working going to the gym and I, I slacked off no I was like I knew for a while I had to deal with some stuff in my body I had to like get my body flexible again I had to um, get my mind in a bit better meditate a bit and get my myself in the position where I wanted to go work out again not because I wanted to look good but because I wanted to be healthy mm-hmm. and so I started working out again like slowly with my body and seeing you stretch every day and seeing you do some yoga mm-hmm. as well has inspired me and we've been stretching as well we're doing a lot of stretching and don't don't sleep on hip mobility you know so you don't have mm-hmm. fucking pains and hip replacements when you're 90 how about that that's a better tip than wearing a mask. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I've been doing good. So I, what habits have you formed then since quarantine? I think I formed a habit of playing again. Everything is like a play to me. Everything is a game to me right now and in the good sense of terms. I'm like, I have a meeting here, being a thing there. It's like all like pushing some buttons that are eventually going to output in into my future. So the game that I'm playing is literally painting the future. So I don't know. I'm Maybe I'm living a life of metaphors, but I like to wake up every day and think that I'm creating something every day. Yeah. And I know that I have to, a long way to go, but um, playing is one of the habits that I, I've acquired again. Playing video games. I've started playing again. I f- have fun. And I allow myself to I allow myself to have fun. So maybe having fun is the the correct term, you know. I have fun creating. I have. I don't consider this yeah. work, you know. Yeah. That's been one habit. Another habit that I've gone that I've gotten was. Um, reading. I think this year I have read more than the past five, six, seven years combined. Maybe. Yeah. Just because I've developed a passion for true mastery. Like, I've started reading on stuff that I already know and, like, I've acquired more skills. But I've also just started reading because I wanted to develop a habit, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm reading um, Talking to Goats by Jim Gray. Your father gave it to me. Mm. Great book. It's about, like, a guy who interviews interviewed the best people, the best athletes and most important people in the world. I'm, I'm doing a podcast. I obviously want to learn more about this guy's life. So, it's... Reading became a habit because I understood the value of learning. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like the habits that I've developed are taking me on a better path, you know. So I like to believe that. And overall, that I feel better than ever. (laughs) I feel like it's weird, you know, like with every year of my life, when tennis dropped, when tennis was not a part of my life anymore, I feel like it was a big stress that left but at the same time it was a big gap that it left yeah because it was a good stress at many times it's it's a sport it's a it keeps you on your toes but when it left i had so much time to deal with that i didn't know what to do then when i finished university and i kind of learned that hey like you don't have to please everybody that was another way that dropped but then that's more like that's more freedom and now that i that that stress of like agency dropped and I didn't escape from it. I didn't quit my job, you know? That that not it dropped and I'm finding a way to make it work and without having all this like pressure. Yeah. The only pressure I have is I wanna be better today than I was yesterday. I had the skills that I have. Yeah. Some fucking skill that I have is gonna be better today than tomorrow. Yeah. Today I'm getting better at podcasting. And I believe that getting better at podcasting starts with listening more. So uh with that being said i want to take like a small break yes, and then okay. and then just because i want to leave with a preview i do want to talk about virtual reality because i know that we just acquired a, an oculus quest 2 mm-hmm. i've already made a video on this that i posted on reddit and i'm gonna post this video on reddit too <laughs> and people got mad because i talked about uh, oculus and i just gave like a very uh loose review It was an opinion. It was like, hey, dude, uh, this is what I think of the Oculus. I didn't write a fucking review for it. It's a preview. So uh, I'm going to talk more about the Oculus and piss off more people on Reddit. All right. But I'm going to listen to you talk about it. So hopefully (laughs) you're going to be the people that you're going to be the one that pisses off the people on Reddit. All right. We'll come back right after the break. And we're back. Holy shit. You stole that. 
I was going to say it. No way. Sorry. And we're back. I said it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We spend way too much time together. We do. <laughs> Bro, it's like 24-7. Anyway. Except when we take walks. VR. Bro, VR? Okay. <laughs> just to give you some background, we just got an Oculus. Can you uh, give me that thing? I'm going to edit this part out. It's fine. Um, We just got an Oculus Quest 2. And... <laughs> Thank you for that. You're welcome. And it is a lot of fun, honestly. It is a VR, it's a virtual reality console made by Facebook, not console, device. I'm not even going to get it wrong. It's a virtual reality device made by Facebook, um, well, bought by Facebook. And the one of the main advantages that it has is that you don't have, it's not a PC VR, so you don't have to control it with a PC, but it's, it's tethered and... Uh, which means that you can play the games without control, without having to connect it to a PC that's powerful enough to host the the games and run the whole system. Yeah. So uh, there is a lot of nice things about it. The one thing that I like the most about it is that it like fucking throws me into reality. Like it it seems it's seamless. Like it it wor- like I was worrying that being cheaper, the effect of being immersed was going to uh be to look like cheaper or anything and it was not it was like wow but one thing that took away from it was whenever i put him on if unless the strap is adjusted in a certain way i see out of like where the nose is supposed to be like i can see the floor you know which kind of takes me out of it also this strap is not this head thing is not not even half as comfortable as the oculus rift was i don't know you tried have you ever tried the ones that they were there the one that i tried i don't remember is it like it's not about comfort, but it's just like about how it grabbed onto your, like head. Yeah. Then the you see the the eye pieces inside, these two on the Oculus Rift you have a little wheel that you can like turn and it will just like slowly like separate them or put them together depending on your eyes. Well, on this one you have like three settings only, and so if your eyes are somewhere in the middle, you have to like try and stop the wheel somewhere in the middle because it jumps from one to the other, from one mode to the other. Yeah. And so that's like kind of like some of the things that you got to figure out. And then I got burned for saying that after you after using it an hour I felt like throwing up. That was me and that was playing certain games. Like if there's certain games where I have to move and because of the fact that running is still very not real in VR and you still have to use the joystick to like move. Sometimes like I don't move and and the camera moves and it looks like my body's moving so I develop a lot of motion sickness. People that are prone to motion sickness are going to throw up. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying going to throw. Like, I'm not saying people are going to throw up, but that's all of VR. That's not this device only, you know? It's always going to have some sort of motion yeah. sickness. And you, over time, I think you get used to it. Yeah. Um, apart from that, game's a bit expensive, but definitely fucking worth it. Um, there could be more options. There could be a bit more options as far as games and apps, but I feel like this is just starting. So we're still getting like an early version. You don't see this in yeah. everybody's house yet, you know? Yeah, I guess. So what are you, now I'm done with, I mean, there's other thoughts that I have. Uh, the experience is, is, is overall pleasant and I'm happy to have this product. I paid what I paid for it and I definitely think that it's worth the money. And I'm actually excited to f- fucking use it tonight right after we're done with this podcast. <laughs> you, you're yawning again yeah. on the fucking podcast live. Sorry. I'm just fucking missing. All right, what do you think about the the Oculus Quest 2 cuz you got to try it on as well and play with it a lot. Well, I'm I love it. I think it's cool. I personally wouldn't have never bought it myself. Like it's not something that I would in, spend my money on. Yeah. But I love having it. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where like if I go over to somebody's house and they have one, I'll yeah. be like, "Can I play with it?" But I'm not going to want to buy one. Right. Um having one is really cool. However, I'm definitely learning, like, I don't want to play with it as often as I thought I would just yeah. because it really, really takes a toll on my eyes. Yeah. And that's just me because I am a, um, basically, like, I guess, ocular sensitive, migraine prone person. Yep. So, like, somebody's iPhone flashlight could flash in my eye at the wrong angle and it could trigger a migraine like the sun could be too bright and it could 
awkwardly trigger a migraine. Like I am, I'm surprised so, that you haven't had a migraine, given cause... the fact that you've used it like 30, 40, even minutes at a time, even that's an hour at a time. I've stopped when I started to feel one. But still, because... it's a pretty big ice train. I feel after yeah. four, 30 minutes, I'm like, God damn, like I'm about to, but like you know, I need I to close it. my eyes for a bit. I love it, but I don't think I can do it for more than an hour. As what like... was your favorite game um, or experience? The best experience i think was the national geographic one mm -hmm. where uh it was a tour of antarctica right and you're like a um traveling photographer but you're also like an expeditioner so like, I, i said this to sydney was it the one that you were in the middle of the carpet rowing yeah. <laughs> yes so here i was sitting on the ground in the middle of the living room like paddling a kayak and in the vr i was literally in a frozen gorge You know, in Antarctica, that I just got off of a huge yeah. ship, and I was supposed to go down this little river, take some pictures of some penguins, and find the colony of penguins or whatever. Yeah. So paddling along, first off, I can look down into the water, see the depths, and see some fish swim by. If I look down into the depths of the water at the right time, I see a gigantic ass whale. And bro, let me tell you, that's scary as shit. Yeah. And then, um you're seeing like penguins and walruses and other little antarctic uh creatures i guess and you're paddling and paddling and then you're passing some penguins like really really close by yeah. and they jump in the water and there was i remember like i screamed out loud because one of the penguins like jumped up onto the <laughs> kayak I and remember. then jumped back off and i was like it's real dude Those, i like, was sound so unprepared for yeah. like what was gonna happen that it scared the shit out of me and i thought an actual penguin jumped up and then as i'm going through whatever i i saw like the whale in the water and i went to go touch it and now like because i wanted to try and like break that yeah that reality where i was like oh my gosh how far can i go down and reach to the floor until yeah. it stops oh my gosh and you're just like going and going and going and going and then I keep thinking that my hand's gonna go into the water, right? And it's gonna be cold, and then I hit the carpet, and I'm like, oh, right, right, yeah. And eventually, when I got down to the end of the ravine, they're like, yeah, you gotta get up there, and they show you this huge iceberg cliff, and they're like, yeah, you gotta get up there, and and find the emperor. You had to climb it with the up. picks. And they gave you ice picks, and you're sitting there climbing, freaking. I think it was like 90 feet in the air, <laughs> of a f like vertical ice wall. There's ice falling around you. You can feel it. And you're just climbing and climbing. You got to get to the top. And then you got to get to, like, these supplies so you can spend the night in a safety tent. And then you got to go find the penguins and take pictures and all that. But, oh, my God, that experience alone, that was my first experience. Because yeah. you did the National Geographic one first, too, but you did the Machu Picchu one. Yeah, it was good, but it was more about taking the pictures, you yeah. know? And Whereas yours was definitely more interactive and it was like yeah. an expedition for real. I just wish that... Because I wanted to do an expedition with National Geographic. In, I wanted one in real life. Well, I don't know now, yeah, but... no. I just wish that National Geographic made more than just those two. I think they did. I think maybe we need to like um, no, I, take I, a full version. I think I looked it up and... Um, for now, there, there's the only two? Yeah. It's just because it Well, takes it takes a, a fucking yeah. while to create but all that. I like it. I just wish there was like a way for it to be less eye straining. Yeah. But then again, like, there's really nothing you could do because, like, it's full technological immersion. Right, yeah. There's just, it, it's basically like having screens all around you 360. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, we have that roller coaster game and, like, that one gives me motion sickness sometimes. If sometimes I, too, yeah. I can ride one and I'm good. But if I keep riding them or if I do some of the shooter ones that are so freaking fast and you're supposed yeah. to, like focus on things and shoot around and you're yeah like, mm -mm. then i start to get motion sick i played But... contractors and contractors like a shooter that you have to yeah. move around that one's like wow if you move around and you like if you move your head right and you turn right and you turn too fast you will throw you off your balance and you're like oh shit yeah. that's too fast what about beat saber beat saber is like the absolute beat favorite saber say, right? is probably the top yeah. just because it's so simple it's like um It's like Fruit Ninja with, what was it, Tap Tap Revenge that yeah. we played back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so well, much fun. Well, honestly, I would say it's Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero yeah, band. Ba But, like, yeah. when when the iPhone came out, the first, like, touchscreen game. Yeah, it was, it was like, Tap Tap was Hero. Tap, yeah, tap, it was Revenge, Tap Tap Hero. Tap Tap Hero yeah. or whatever. 
Um, I like it, and we've also found that it's a fun um, ex- form of exercise because yeah. they have like songs that are for especially for fit like exercise. And so basically, in Fit Beat, or in um, sorry, in Beat Saber, yeah, you have to slice all these blocks at the right moment in time. If you turn on the setting, you have to sw- swipe them in the right direction. Yeah, like Beat Saber and you have is to match the color to the beat and the direction. And there's also sometimes walls coming at you, and you have to either move to the side or duck under them. Yeah. And so the fit ones, they just give you walls back to back so that you have to sit there and go back and forth and, like, bounce your legs, and you're actually, like, burning some calories. Yeah. And I think I recorded it, and I burned, like, 50 calories playing two games with a fit beat. So I like it in that sense. And I I really, one day, I want to get the, like, fit vr yeah and i want to try that and i want to see what like fitness is like because if it's yeah i think it's cool if it's simulating a gym yeah i might want that because i like gyms. no because i like gyms i just don't like other people i have the planet fitness thing where i can bring a guest free any it says anytime go to the gym with other people there if you can close down the gym that'd be great yes and we're going to work out no (laughs) you're fucking working out your neck already with this I'm kidding. I would totally invest in that. How much is it? 30 bucks? I don't know. I we'll think talk some, about it. Something like that. We'll talk about it. <laughs> um, I don't know. For me, I think it was just an overall... Some, I, it was something that I've been wanting for a while. And I, once I got it, I think that I got my fix in a sort of way. But I also see it as like something that I can definitely interact with every day. Want to familiarize myself with it and to see the opportunities that are going to arise from VR within my job, within my life, in the mm-hmm. future, you know? Maybe now it's somewhat still limited compared to what's going to become. Yeah. But I feel like it's very cool. Like, it's cool to feel, experience something like that, you know? Yeah. I think, like, it's a nice experience. And yeah, I'm happy that you're also enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. But like I said, I wouldn't buy one for myself. No, yeah, I totally get it's that. Like, it's like a PlayStation. Like, I, I would enjoy playing it on somebody else's. But, like, I would never buy one for myself just because I don't enjoy it that much. That yeah. I want to play it myself and go buy my own games and... What about the fact that it has to be logged on to a Facebook account? It's going to be a bit what about it? messed up now because it has like your data and then my data keeps changing height. Like Facebook's not going to know whose data is is anymore. Well, that's why we're throwing it off. Yeah. No, I feel like the fact that you have to log in with a Facebook account and everything that you do is monitored under a Facebook product with a Facebook account is a bit... That's I don't know, like asking for trouble. I think about it for sometimes. Future trouble. It's like sometimes I wonder if some of those cameras are like on. And it's just I don't think it's like that. I don't what? even. It's because like <laughs> we mostly think that it's like shady shit that they do, and that's that's how they get away with shit. They don't do like yeah, or maybe they do, but they don't. They make sure that if they do shady shit, they don't get anything for it. But whenever you turn this on, whenever you turn your device on, you have to draw safety area around uh you where there's no objects so whenever you're playing a game and you approach an area that you might hit something you it's gonna warn you like hey you go you know stay within your area well when you do it you obviously have to see the area so they turn on these cameras that you can see like around here and you can see your room in infrared so not only you can see your room you can see your room with like night vision even yeah when you turn that on i don't know if facebook has the right to like store that or see that or do whatever like what can they do with it you know what can they what can they and can they do with it you know or what can they can they or cannot do with it in the future and so it's just a bit weird but i guess if they wouldn't store this data oculus would someone else would it's just that i know facebook has uh, access to also other data so it becomes a point of like who do you want to give your data to true but at this point doesn't really matter it does. I, I think it still does. I, I feel like um, soon we're going to live in a world where data is not going to be free anymore. And giving up on so much data now is going to have... You're going to have less of a value later, you know? Like, I always have this urge of going and deleting all my Facebook ad activity and resetting it. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just tough. You never know. The life's getting weird. Monoliths appearing all over the fucking... What the fuck was that? They sent one in Romania. They sent a monolith in Romania. Like, what the fuck? It's, if it's aliens, bro, they got it right. 
best country. They're gonna eat well. The women are beautiful. The people are smart. Like everybody's a hard worker. There's no distinction between a man and a woman. Everyone just fucking works their ass off. Aliens chose a good place to go. I'm just saying. I mean, they went to California. They went to Romania. California is like also, you know, tech world hype working people they they got like their connections there i don't know why the fuck they'd come to romania like you have to be drunk to go to romania honestly like all jokes aside and then like maybe they think it's, it's the center of europe it might who knows like or or who knows what kind of deal we made with them a Wait, while is ago it the big, is it one of like the biggest countries no, no. we it's look like a fucking fish mm-hmm. maybe that's Ooh, why don't ask me this kind of fucking if trivia they, questions maybe they picked it because they're like oh that one looks like a fish they must be yeah Full of fish. I don't know. Do you think it's like a marketing campaign? Do you think it's aliens? I'm hoping it's aliens, but I don't I know if it is. I think it's aliens. Somebody, somebody confirmed it was aliens. And like, I think somebody said Blah. Trump knew about it. And, Trump knew and about it. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm sure. I was like, okay. Yeah, I'm sure one day I in the morning. I think aliens are real. You can't tell me that like, like we've had this conversation before. You can't tell me that out of all these universes and all these billions of it, Milky Ways and whatever, all the things in the space of time and everything there's no possible way that we on this tiny little thing called earth are, we, are the only things that are living yeah like there's no possible way like that just doesn't make it does like that doesn't i always feel work. like it's normal that if the government knows something for them maybe not to say everything just because but well, the government the fucking people who know everything and the government the intelligence or whatever they're not going to release it all because people are going to lose their fucking shit they're not going to be not going to be able to manage it but I always fucking wonder, like, I'm looking past the, at the past three presidents, you know, like, Trump, Obama, and Bush. I wonder what their first day in office was like whenever they're, like, told that there's fucking aliens. Like, I wonder, do they wake up and, like, today's the day that I'm gonna learn that there's aliens. Like, today is the day I'm gonna be sworn in presidency. They're gonna tell me, like, the ten great secrets of America. Maybe we'll find <laughs> out with Joe Biden. Yeah, do you, do you know, like, they sit him down and they're like, hey, dude. There's fucking aliens. And then they give you two minutes to lose your shit. And then they're like, this is what we're going to do. Like, we're not going to tell them. And then, I don't know. Like, do you think, like, imagine Trump, like, taking that. Imagine Biden taking that, you know? Biden's like, oh, my God. I have to fucking deal with this shit, too. Like, I have to deal with weed. I have to deal with black people. I have to deal with immigration. And I have to deal with aliens, too. Yeah. There's so much that man can do with his energy. And I'm not talking about politics. I'm just talk- I'm talking about aliens, to yeah. be honest. I know. But I'm just talking about, like... Having that sort of power, or a scientist, like, you you know, you're brought on to work for a project, let's say, and, and they, they, uh, hypothetically, they know there's aliens, and they're like, yeah, there's aliens, and you're going to have to help us with this, you know? Like, that's what Bob Lazar was talking about. Um, but I'm diverging. The monoliths. It's crazy. Um, all right. I think I'm going to have one more i'm gonna choose from one more of these things like a roulette that we have over there okay i think we're gonna wrap it up with let's have a final look at how our 2020 was we don't have to cover the whole year because that would be a a, a big thing but i feel like on my terms there has been a year it has been a year of change good it's not good change bad change has been ruthless fucking change and in all of the fucking ways that happened in my life and most of that change has brought a lot of growth and Yes, uh, a lot of undesirable things happen and it's maybe not an ideal world that we're living right now. But I think that in a time where everything went to shit, I had the luck to be um, in a position where I had people that were able to take, take care of me, host me. And I also was lucky to have uh, my parents raise me the way they did so I could be relentless and continue working and i just feel like i was really happy to be where i'm at and like what i mean people who hosted me like you as well like people who love me people who supported me because of i cannot say that i killed this year because i killed no i killed it because i had the necessary needs and the necessary opportunities and the people that supported me to do it you know Mm -hmm. so i feel like this year if anything i learned that i have more people around me than i than i thought i did and I just learned to appreciate the little things in life. And I definitely learned that some things are definitely not worth fucking stressing over. And I kind of feel like I don't give a shit about so many things like I used to give a shit. Like January 1st, many things. Many, many things that I give a shit about. Um, 
December 17th. I can count them on 10 fingers, I think. So I, I, I think I've narrowed down my priorities in 2020. And I don't know what to say about 2021. I haven't gotten down to write down goals yet. But I think 2021 is... I don't, I don't know. People are expecting something to change because the year suddenly is over. Um, I'm just waiting to see. I'm, 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 I'm hungry for 2021. That's all I can say. I'm very, very hungry. Um, it's just another year. Let's go. How about you? Tell me um, your 2020 recap. I've, I've had a lot of learning, a lot of like discovering what I want, discovering um, like I guess I get who I want to be. You know? I mean, you know. But it's yeah, real. just it's cliche and shit. But basically, like what I want in what I want as my lifestyle, like what I want in, in a household, what I want in a career, what I want in personal life. And I've kind of just kind of I figured that out. And now I'm, I mean, we've just been taking step by step trying to get there, doing what we love. And I think 2021 just holds more upward motion. Like I don't have much prediction i just know that i just feel like things are going to keep going up it's definitely here that i can see it's it's coming to coming to rumble yeah and then if you can catch it on a good wave i think it's gonna be it's gonna be a great year and if you don't i think it's still gonna be a great year of, of learning but catch me now or my artist margin's gonna go up i said that you know i said i said that when i was selling my hoodie i was like buy this hoodie now before i before there's another zero added because of, before a couple of zeros are added at the end, you never know. Mm. I've said the same thing last year. I I don't know. Like I wanted yeah. to start freelancing and look where I'm at now. So start charging ten bucks for my stickers. The this is a, 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 a you know a case study of not what I did or what I can do or what you can do. It's what the right circumstances, uh, the right drive and motivation. Thank well, we you, got a Alexa. package. The right technology and the right people can do in a year. And with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up. This is the uh, this is our last podcast for 2020 because I just don't see. Or maybe not. I, I, I don't want to say be, it might not be because we're going to have to come back. Maybe we'll do one in uh, Charleston. Maybe one we're going to do in Charleston or maybe. Or maybe we'll do a New Year's Eve one. New Year's Eve. That's what I was thinking. Like around New Year's Eve. Um, I don't know. Goals for 2021. Something like that. They don't need to hear our goals. No, not our goals. We can put like a couple of... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do the goals that they're going to see like out there. Like goals for the podcast, yeah, you know. And also, like, uh, I want to bring a bulletproof way for people to create their goals. that are going to last. Because people... Writing them on a list is great, but there's a few things that you can do that you can just get your goals done a bit better. That I fucking used because I was a student athlete and I had no fucking time to do anything in my life. So if I could accomplish some goals doing that, I think that... You guys can learn from it. But until then, Mark, thank you so much for being on this episode once more. Episode 13. God damn it. This is so good. I'm so happy. I, I, it's, it's not gonna, I mean, until episode like 1013, it's not going to be the same. You know, it's not gonna, there's not going to be another episode 13. So. Well, then it's good that it's also on the 17th. Which wait, is wait. There's a sound of the police, actually of the firemen. All right. Thank you. Thank you so Chicago much. Fire. Thank you, uh, Chicago. Thank you, Chicago Fire, for keeping us safe. <laughs> happy Everyone, holidays. happy holidays. We'll see you soon. Hopefully. We'll Have a good see one. You.